it's good for all of us to be out here to inspire other girls because we're all breaking barriers. Period. Seeing girls play baseball is something that you think you would never see, so I'm uh, seeing girls play baseball. Watch out, her feet never stops. You see that? Well, maybe we can kill two birds with one stone, and, and why don't we do, you know, there are a lot of girls around. We see a lot of girls playing baseball and softball in other settings. Um, uh, why don't, let's just, uh, let's just organize a girls' team. It felt weird to throw. Don't worry about it, don't worry about it. This is like first place in Texas. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. About um, more than half Latina, about a quarter African American, and about a quarter white. And, and um, in the past, we've had a couple of uh, Asian American players. So yeah, we are really diverse, diverse, and, and we're proud of that. And we actually we aim for that. We, we recruit girls in the city. We, we'd like to, we, we we chose a league that's based here in the city. We're playing mostly against African American and Latino boys. Um, entirely for the most, you know, those, those, those teams are all the teams we play against are majority African American and Latino and that's what we wanted to do, you know, we're trying to, we, we identify as part of a movement to revitalize baseball in the city, in cities as well, where it has really died off over the, over the years, over the last 30, 40 years. Good, Lily, follow your throat. Good. It's good to inspire other girls and they can come watch out and just watch us and maybe they can play. And our goal is to get other girls to play baseball. Oh. It's very inspiring hanging out with all these girls, especially for you. Especially me. On the guys team, they might look down to you because you're a girl, but when you're playing with all girls, you guys are all getting along well and helping each other get better. It feels good because if they're like making fun of you and then you end up winning against them, it's telling them that if just because we're girls, that doesn't mean we can't play baseball. Because them proving them wrong is the best Yeah. Thing. Because we're loaded. Shut them up. Even if they shut us down, we can't let that get to us and we have to be strong. Don't care what people think. Yeah. I don't care what nobody think of that. Yes, you do. You they care what I think. <laughs> Once we're here and we're a unit, we can beat any boy team out here, I promise. It's not even a job, man. It's just, it's just something I love to do. I know one thing, I'm a, I'm a man that believes in Christ and he has put this passion in my heart to, to, um, to be a leader. Um, I never was, I was always been leading the boys, but um, you know, coaching the girls is just, sometimes I get kind of soft on them because they are little girls. Um, but like today, for instance, you see Coach Booker. That was Coach Booker that would have to go nuts on him. You can't be at this part time. This is a job you can't be at part time. And you're gonna get part time results. Like, baseball is a lifestyle. Father Booker apologized and told him I'm sorry and all that stuff, man. So, just having that fine balance sometimes, just knowing that they're girls, um, but you still gotta coach yourself, man. But that's been the most rewarding is how they've been reciprocative, how they've been reciprocating love from me and I've been giving it to them. So, that's been the most rewarding that they believe and they know I care about them. They kind of get what they're doing is special. They sense it among themselves. What they're doing is special because most most of these girls, all of them, have had the experience of being the only girl on their team. Some of these girls have been the only girl in their entire league as they've been growing up playing baseball. Um, but now that we are together actually competing against boys and we're not just talking about it and, and sort of getting a lot of pats on the back and you go girls, you're so awesome. And now that we're actually having to perform and play the game, um, you know, it's it's much different. The thing is that if you want to play baseball or play any other sport and they shut you down, don't give up. Be strong and don't let anybody get the best of you. Me, it's a preacher. Oh, yeah. Um, fans and uh, people who say a, a couple things. I wish that this existed when I was little, and I'm so happy that you're doing this because I always wanted to play baseball, or I wanted to stay in baseball, but I was forced to play softball, even from an early age. So I, I know that we're doing something important when I hear those comments, and then what it tells me is that we are blazing a trail, and there will be other parents that of younger girls that will form their own teams, or that will just keep their daughters in baseball, and in general, just teach their daughters, you can do whatever you want. You know, if somebody, if somebody has, if there's some stupid, you know, nonsensical social norm, like all girls, you'll eventually have to switch to softball because baseball's not for you. They're, they're, they're seeing us do this, and they're gonna teach their daughters, you don't have to abide by rules that aren't fair, that don't make sense. So when, when, they, when I see parents, when I see the, the, you know, that the light bulb has gone off in their head, 
by, by seeing our team. That is really gratifying. I'm gonna say what my mom says. We're all living the dream right now. Yeah. I dream every day. I dream I have 80,000. I, oh I have a million dollars. Stop, Stop. 80,000, bro. We're talking about baseball. That is. It's a baseball glove. Exactly. <laughs>